This video is all about head and shoulders. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel in order to get notified when we add new video content. Hello, I'm Fawad Razakzala, Market Analyst with Think Markets. Well, the head and shoulders pattern occurs when a trend is in the process of reversing either from a bullish or a bearish trend. It's among one of the key reversal patterns. Now, this is how a bearish head and shoulders formation typically looks like. And this is how a bullish formation would typically look like. As we have explained in the previous videos in the key reversal series, the trend reversal pattern can be in the form of a false break, a double top or a bottom, head and shoulders, or more commonly a combination of these formations. So make sure to watch the other videos in the series to have a more comprehensive understanding of reversal patterns. Now then, the head and shoulders top pattern is created when price breaks above an old high or the left shoulder and then reverses momentarily to create the head before staging another breakout attempt. But this one falls short of the previous peak, thus creating the right shoulder. A neckline can be drawn across the bottoms of the left shoulder, the head and the right shoulder. If price breaks through this neckline, then it will confirm the completion of the head and shoulders reversal pattern. The objective measured move target once the neckline is broken is equivalent to the distance from the top of the head to the neckline, like this. If you're trying to anticipate the formation of the right shoulder, then an ideal location would be around the left shoulder area or near a key short term resistance, which could be a horizontal level or a Fibonacci level such as the 38.2, 61.8 or 78.6% retracement. Now the head and shoulders patterns are rarely symmetrical and most of the times the right shoulder is either bigger or smaller in height and or width than the left shoulder. Also the neckline is barely straight as you can see in the example of head and shoulders bottom formation which is the exact opposite of the top formation we discussed before. Now let me walk you through some examples on the charts to discuss exactly how we look for trades using the head and shoulders pattern. Here we're looking at an example of the head and shoulders top pattern on the daily chart of Morgan Stanley. Now as you can see Morgan Stanley was making higher highs and higher lows and there was this bullish trend line that was derived from connecting some of those key lows in this uptrend. Now once the uh, trend line broke down this is when you could have been anticipating the formation of a head and shoulders top pattern. Now if you didn't get an ideal entry around the right shoulder area you could have always waited for the breakdown of the neckline. The neckline broke down here and an ideal short trade entry would have been to sell the rounded retest of the neckline. The stop loss for this trade could have been placed above the most recent high, namely this one. And the stock, uh, well, it took its sweet time but eventually broke down and went on to hit the measured move objective of this head and shoulders setup around here. In this example, we are looking at the hourly chart of copper prices. Now, as you can see, copper has been falling and here the sell off accelerates in one sharp move before rallying equally sharply to create what looks like a double top formation. But the V-shaped recovery suggests that this could potentially turn into a head and shoulders bottom formation or another reversal pattern. So what I would do here is mark out some key levels in order to anticipate the rough location of the right shoulder where we could look for long trade setups. I would start off by marking out the left shoulder and another level that would be of interest to me is the high of this candle because this level has not been retested after prices broke above it. So somewhere around here is where you could potentially trade the right shoulder long without waiting for confirmation of the break of the neckline. Now, if you did trade the right shoulder long, your stop loss would obviously be somewhere just below the head of the uh, HNS pattern. Anyway, let's see what happens. Well, price comes back down, tests this naked level and the left shoulder area before bouncing nicely. If you didn't trade this level long as prices were dropping and wanted to wait for some confirmation, then you would have had your confirmation right here after copper broke above its most recent interim high. So you could have traded that long, placing your stop loss below the right shoulder right here. But if you wanted the head and shoulders to be completed before going long, 
you could have done so when prices closed above the neckline right here. However, one of the disadvantages of waiting for the break of the neckline would be the unfavorable location of the stop loss as prices have now moved sharply away from the right shoulder area or another key level which you could have used to place your stop below. Also, as you have missed out on all this move, there's the potential for the bullish momentum to get exhausted just as the neckline breaks. This is why I prefer trading near the right shoulder area than waiting for the completion of the HNS pattern before going long. But in this case, the trade would have worked nicely as uh, prices continue to trade higher after breaking the neckline. So there you have it. The head and shoulders pattern, like all the other key reversal formations, could be traded many different ways. But it all starts by you either spotting or anticipating the formation of such reversal patterns.